Blessed love and peace, Rastafari. Respect and honor to His Majesty Hel Selassie I. Respect and med respect and honor to Her Majesty Waisar Monen. All thanks and praise to the Most High, Elohim Jah. We back in it, and it's Thursday. It's dusky. We done just wrapped up our a portion of the uh, the gathering joint for this this evening. This week for Umoja Airi. Um, and uh, there is appropriateness for me sharing a, uh, like a summation, like a wrap up of some of the joints I done shared this past week. As tedious, tenacious, and triumphant as it may be. Give thanks and praise. Um, sex, marriage, Health and them teens. I mentioned in the six traditions of the earth, six prominent traditions of the earth, uh, rooted within Torah, Bhagavad Gita, Dignakaya, Dhammapada, Gospels, Quran, and Dao Te Ching. Um, there are basically three different approaches. Um, in one approach, in, with, with, with respect to marriage, sex uh, and relationship between man and woman within the traditions of China and within India generally speaking and in very different ways the basic approach is uh, there's an absence of a doctrine of like uh, commandments do this don't do this don't do this this is the penalty this and the other it's basically just an understanding of the nature of things cause and effect recognizing what's healthy what's unhealthy what's harmful what's beneficial what's healing uh, cause and effect karma Tao that's the basic premise. So, um, and this knowledge about that, recognizing like there's certain things that are harmful. Yeah, uh, it's not a matter of like condemning people to hell or otherwise, or even accusing people of being sinners. Just like it's harmful. So if you don't want to feel that harm, don't do it. Um, and there are things that are healing. So if you want to feel that healing, that well-being, do it. So that's basically a, a summation from the, the approach of the general approach um, of the paradigm shared by uh, the, uh, the traditional traditions of China and India. Uh, when it comes to uh, the Buddha and Jesus, it's very simple. Celibacy, no sex at all, not at all. Plain and simple on both accounts. Cats can, can argue that there's a little arguing that with the Buddha because the Buddha says it very explicitly. But within Christianity, cats may want to argue, and it's plain and simple. Jesus says, don't have sex. Now, he says it for those who have ears to hear. The same thing with Buddha. Buddha says, not everybody has to practice this thing, but that's the highest, that's the highest thing. And it's pe for people who, who share these teachings to support that. If they don't do it themselves, to support those that do. Um, same thing with Jesus, um, basically. So um, the actuality, though, is that each of these traditions is perpetuated. Uh, because the, the kinfolk are supported by householders who have sex with each other, have children, and who continue, who continue the teachings, the tradition, the narratives, the, the, the authority, the earthly authority through the generations. So there is an intrinsic relationship with the household life, even though it's d a distance. And basically the, the wisdom, particularly from the Buddha, is that the household life is just very challenging. There's just You have to have a lot of... Um, uh, you got a lot of things to do in terms of providing food on the table, dealing with like navigating and negotiating with the with the competitions of the of the earthly realm, and additionally, vying for a chunk of the of the pie and everything. So uh, it can it's very difficult to be like fully optimally righteous and ethical, empathetic, and additionally, because cats can just see the finiteness of, of within the competition. Um, so the the methodology of, of celibacy is just letting it go, not being a comp competition and, and not being a comp competitor in that people are increasingly willing to listen and, and, and heed and, and, and even support the cause of, 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 of the celibate spiritual aspirant, uh, the bhikshu, the sadhu, um, <laughs> the, even, we can, could, can we say the benevolent Samaritan, kind of, kind of sort of lightweight. Um, so that that's the the methodology, the paradigm um, within uh, Christianity and Buddhism. Uh, then we get to Islam and Israel, Judaism, uh, and in each of these traditions, well, in each of the traditions, marriage is, is supported, marriage is encouraged, 
Um, um, and in the paradigm of marriage, a man can have multiple wives, and it's favorable to have just one wife, but a man can have multiple wives. And even beyond that, uh, so, so it's supported, and it's a way of recognizing that this is how the community is continuing in it. Now, the difference between Islam and, and, and Israel is that in Israel, it's a commandment. A man and woman have to ha a man in this life has to have children. That's that's the guidance. Just like any, just like being honest, observing Shabbat, and additionally, it's a mitzvah to be married, to have children, and to raise the children in these teachings as well. To walk on this earth in a righteous way. In Islam, it's less of a commandment. It is encouraged. It's recognized that it's. It, um, it, People can live a celibate life, but it's not its not a necessary thing. Marriage is encouraged because it's recognized that marriage is part of the partnership, the intrinsic partnership between the, the primordial partnership between man and woman. Uh, and it helps, uh, it helps both uh, individuals, both the man and the woman in this life, uh, in that partnership, support, um, and additionally. And um, so it's very much... It's very much encouraged and to do it in a proper way. So um, in, Israel, in, in, uh, in Israel and in Islam, marriage is uh, uh, prominent, uh, significant, supported. There are a lot of rules concerning um, how to go about being married, who can, who can marry who, um, and what the proper uh, behavior is within marriage, uh, how to support the marriages of others, and what, what appropriate interaction is between uh, married couples as community. Um, there is description of the responsibilities a husband has towards a wife in terms of material support, even conjugal uh, responsibilities. Similarly, with a wife, uh, up being being uh, in many ways obedient, uh, but in that sense, it's a matter of increasingly being obedient of the ethics of the family that guide the entirety, and the man being um, a um, having increasing um, responsibility um, in in adhering to that, and so that's traditionally. What, how we can understand the notion of a woman obeying the husband, but it's, in actuality it's the woman obeying the same principles that the husband does. The husband just has a greater responsibility in knowing what those principles are and adhering to those principles. Uh, and the woman has an increasing responsibility of sharing the principles of raising the children within those principles in a nurturing, secluded environment away from all that competition and everything else like that. So, um, again, Israel, uh, the Torah and the Quran respectively in, in very similarly provide guidance in that respect. Now, at the same time, there's also the allowance of divorce within the Quran and within the Torah. Um, and uh, so there's that element. And, and again, a, a, a husband can have numerous wives. And even beyond that, again, according to Torah and according to the Quran, a man can also have concubines, female slaves, uh, and have sex with the female slaves. That's the actuality. As 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 um, as cringe as it may seem, that's actuality. And it's a very significant and important thing to recognize because it's a release valve um, that, 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 that provides a, a significant amount of... Um, how do you describe this? Um, it provides some leeway in terms of um, the ebbs and flows of society, diplomacy, hierarchies, and additionally... Um, where, whereby a man can, uh, who have those, a man who has those proclivities, a man who has the, the mental fortitude and additionally in, in the intrinsic competitiveness, uh, essentially, uh, to guide that in an increasingly constructive way with the anticipation of being rewarded um, with the uh, relationship with other women. Uh, and as, 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 again, as objectifying and, and, and whatever as a, that may seem to be in that it is, that's what it is. Uh, and it's allowed within the Quran and it is allowed within the Torah, uh, even though it's very much against today's standards. But again, today's standards are very hypocritical anyway. So without getting too much into that, um, th that's, what the, that's the summation of these joints. Now, I'll share with you some further insight on my personal experience for those who, whom it benefits uh, who are, are ex experience similar circumstances, ex similar similar challenges, uh, conundrums, and, and and bewilderment, and trying to figure out some solutions, just even figure out like the the, the what the what the challenge is. So, one of the things that um, I mentioned before that being mixed, um, there tends to be the um, the uh, 
the pigeonholing of mixed people into a liberal methodology of li a lifestyle of just laissez-faire, whatever, whatever. Um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of selfishness within that. There's a lot of mutual predatoriness, a lot of unhealthy interaction and un unhealthy objectif objectification, even when it's mutual and consensual. And it, it's unsustainable. It it it, it, uh, it wanes uh, eventually in, at at some stage in life, around middle age, e even before that part. Uh, and it, it, it leads towards malaise. It leads to depression. It leads to a certain nihilism. Uh, it leads to I mean the, the indulgence, self indulgence, self self involvement, and, and additionally leads to that, that kind of like desolationist kind of ex experience and, and, and despondency, depression, and them things like that. Um, and some cats might last a little bit longer than other cats, and, and some cats can, can, can be further predatory and very, very skillful otherwise. But anyways, that's one of the challenges in, in the mixed community is, that, is it, it, there's the, the, that the aggregate of the mainstream tends to like just, particularly in Western civilization, tends to just, and, and particularly Euro, Eurocentric civilization, tends to just pigeonhole mix as just being an other, and then just throws others within like the rebellious element of its, of its, of its society, of its the domestic society. And the rebellious element is kind of just, again, free for all, uh, don't judge me, I'm okay, da 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 And, and uh, there's a lot of resonance within that because for those who experience abuse in addition, it's like, okay, it's, 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 like, a, it's like a relief, but at the same time, like, that, what, what's the purpose of life if it's just about oneself? It's, it's, it's meaningless. So that's one of the challenges with being mixed because, um, anyways, without getting too much into that. Um, so... And that affects again, uh, understandings of marriage, understandings of sex, understandings of healthy relationship. Uh, and my point for that is that what I recognize is that um, within my spiritual path, um, I live a a lifestyle that is increasingly conservative, uh, that has uh, has a conservative uh, um, perspective methodology when it comes to traditional family, um, and, and and relationships, and additionally. So, uh, but at the same time, um, well, so at the same time, loving everybody and interacting with everybody. And, and the challenge with that is, is because those who have traditional viewpoints concerning family and, and relationships and additionally tend to be very homogenous and only mess with each other uh, because um, it's, it's a essentially a double standard where people are very cool with each other, with like folk, but with people who are different, nah, don't mess with them. People who do, do, do things in a different way, no, nah, don't mess with them. It's getting dark now, because I said it was dusky dusky. Um, so, um, so traditional people, conservative people, but traditional people only mess with each other and don't mess with anybody outside. And there's purpose to that, because again, uh, once the lines are getting blurry and everything, it's difficult to keep that main, maintain that discipline, particularly in teaching that to student, uh, teaching that to, to children, and additionally. So, um, that it's 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 a it's, it's an emerging kind of a paradigm of being liberal in terms of uh, of uh, br uh, having bridges with the different communities and, and, and genuinely like loving and working with all types, but at the same time having a conservative view. That, that abstains from delving into the whole free fall when it comes to sex and other types of uh, indulgences, uh, even like intoxicants, uh, uh, eating all different types of food or whatever, just like a free fall kind of lifestyle, um, even a bohemian lifestyle perhaps. Uh, it's, it's different from that, the, the, what I'm talking about. And um, we can find that we can find this combination, this, this balance of conservative and liberal within certain mystic traditions. That that are have a, a high a conscientiousness of otherness, and, and a peacefulness with otherness, a cooperation with otherness, but at the same time recognizing and having a knowledge about the traditional teachings that are very conservative. So within Sufism, within uh, mystic mystic uh, Judaism, within mystic uh, Christianity, within even Eastern traditions, it's, it's not even a mystical kind of like branch. It's kind of like in, intuitively part of that. We can we can see this within Jain. We can see this within Sikhi uh, uh, to a, to a large extent as well. Um, and, uh, uh, that's one other thing. Um, Baha'i, uh, yes, and, and, um, ah, Rastafari, Um, so, anyways, that's, that's one thing I recognize. Now, the other thing I recognize is that, um, here we go. I am corrupted in this life at a very early age. Um, and, Without being knowledgeable about those about that actuality, what what the implications are, even much about it, any of that, and just I'm progressing through life, 
with 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 that frame with that with that frame of reference um and it's only later in life that i become increasingly aware of like wait a minute this is this, this is these things ain't proper uh, but by that point, I already corrupt numerous kinfolk in, the, in this life. Uh, and so uh, as much of, of amends as I, I, that I endeavor to make with that, performing teshuva, um, uh, atonement, uh, making apologies, um, and, and uh, doing the, 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 the traditional um, measures to atone for that, I still have that karma. And, and, and that affects all my relationships from this, from, from this moment continuing on in life regarding marriage and additionally and so that's just that's just life now um there are a lot of kinfolk who experience that too and it's very difficult to kind of come to terms with to even acknowledge that because uh it affects even just every, every relationship that one has in life parents siblings family friends and additionally because like guys don't want to think about that because they're enveloped in it too and they don't want to recognize like the improper in, improperness of it um and uh it, it, it affects uh job implications and everything everything about life it affects um so when one arrives at that understanding uh there are basically two paths a person has the option of taking uh, when a person recognizes that the person is corrupted regardless of when it happens or whatever um and it, that sounds like somewhat passive but Every, everybody experiences some element of corruption in life, the coming of age kind of experience. Um, and there, there are basically two options um, a person can take. Uh, one is e either become merciless, like not, not giving two fucks, not giving two shits, and just like just going for broke and, 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 and dolo style and, and with whatever facade is that, that is facilitated, whether it's like just outright cutthroat or whether it's sly and slick and everything else like that but that's one option just to be merciless just like just turn off and like just say bump life and and i'm i'm, I'm gonna go for whatever that's one that's one methodology the other methodology is to be to throw oneself at the mercy of a community um i mean some cats go the the the, the isolationist methodology but that uh, that element kind of kind of goes into um either one of those that i just mentioned so it's basically just the merciless or the mercy uh, throwing oneself at the mercy of a community, be like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm messed up, da 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 da. I'm trying to do my best. Can y'all accept me and like support me in this community? And 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 um, I, I, I take the humble, a humble, humble uh, spot, getting where I fit in, and um, and, and there it is. So, it and and for some kin folk, that's easier easier said than done. When I when I endeavored to do that through the years, um, with a number of different communities, what I recognize is that. Um, every, in particularly religious communities, um, every community is, is basically intrinsically, thoroughly, categorically um, racist, uh, anti-African, particularly um, across across the across the globe, uh, except obviously in many, in many ways in Africa, and, and within 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 Afrocentric kinfolk, uh, there's just a it's, there's just a colorism uh, and there's a there's a racism. Um, and that's, there's, there's little getting around that. That's just the actuality. And it's been that way for thousands of years. Uh, particularly when you look at the scriptures <laughs> from, from these ancient traditions, it's, it's right, right, right there too. So the prospect of like, even in taking the humble thing and, the, and, and like pursuing and cultivating like a, a genuine livelihood or a genuine, genuine lifestyle, um, it's just recognizing that it's all, there's always going to be, uh, an undue an unjust, uh, an, an illegal, according to the precepts of the tradition itself, an illegal uh, devaluation and, and um, uh, we can call it dehumanization as well. Just it, that's what it is. Uh, as, as as long as one is accepted within the fold of the community, and the community will support the person as a lesser entity. Uh, and as long as the person is willing to accept that lesser entity status, and the person may be even like have a wife, may even have, or a husband if the person is a woman in that situation, but the person even may marry, um, and it, it might be somebody who's marginalized and additionally, and so someone who's commensurate with with the the, the perceived value of of the of the of the, the new newbie or whatever, uh, it might even be somebody who's of considerable ranking in, in like the, with the pro prospect of the children through generation and generation being able to establish them, themselves within like the the the, uh, the hierarchy within society and kind of like um, forgetting the, the unfortunate past and heritage that the person comes from, 
And that's nasty. That's what people do for thousands of years, for even the recent hundreds of years and continually. So anyways, but that's the actuality. When one is of African ancestry, that's it's just categorical uh, devaluation. Uh, and, and, and it's unjust, it's illegal according to the own, of own traditional uh, rules and laws. And that's what's particularly difficult because that means that everybody who's, who even supports the person is a hypocrite. Uh, and it, and it, un, it undermines the legitimacy of the tri tradition itself. And that's part of the paradox that these, these, these kinfolk, these uh, uh, holy traditions uh, are, are need to reconcile because that's the actuality. Um, so that was that, that was the challenge because uh, looking for 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 that place in any of the traditions is, is just rote devaluation and it wasn't even just a matter again of, of just like uh sucking it up and, and um and just being okay you know i'll do my best in this generation and and do my best for my children uh, and then and then prepare for for future generations but just recognizing that no because this goes against the teachings how, how can i genuinely believe and practice these teachings and accept this illegal status of devaluation it just undermines the whole faith itself so so it's just like i can't do it um and then when, when in in going to Rastaf, uh, rastafari yes but also additional afrocentric uh, uh religiosity and traditions there's there's racism and colorism against people who are of european ancestry and in light lighter uh complexion so again, this is the same thing, but just in in, a, in it's not in some ways it's a reactionary, in some ways it's just intrinsically. Um, when we look at the ancient uh, teachings, and additionally there there's the shibboleth and in, in, in the narratives that that just explain uh, the, the 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 lesser status of those who are are, are other than um, uh, the darkest of this earth. So in terms of color, the skin, pigmentation, melanin, as it's called in the science jargon. So uh, again. Um, there's an absence of a sanctuary, or even it's not. It may have less of a, a, a hypocrisy in terms of contradicting the traditional laws, but still, it's other than a sanctuary, a safe place to raise children and, and to to like to to genuinely, with benevolent will, uh, consider. Okay, um, my wife and I will, will we're going to have children and raise our children in this life, um, because that's subjecting uh, life to to rote devaluation and. Are precluded from doing that. Then the other option is the republic, so the, like like the secular option outside of religion, um, and <clears throat> um, there's still there's still the colorism, there's still the racism in science, um, in in uh, in the republic, and additionally. So um, the the solution I find um, is um, working and living and believing and practicing within Rastafari, but as a mixed color Rastafari and upfront candid, uh, and work, um, Rastafari brethren and I, and sister and I are, are working on that, that negotiation because I have legit status and in our, our circle has legit status, uh, in the, the African diaspora in the work that we do for years and years and years, decades at this point in supporting and, and building within the African diaspora on the continent and, and here and, and further around the earth. So that's legit. And it's not for the sake of just getting an in and a credential. That's that's who we are. We honor our ancestors. And that's part of, though that's our that's what we do. It's our responsibility. And so we, we, we fulfill that strongly by the grace of God and give thanks and praise. Um, and so our African brethren and sister and have to recognize that and honor that and respect that and support that. As, and, and, and that's that might sound egotistical, that might sound even immodest. That's just facts. Just like we, we do a significant amount uh, to support our European Eurocentric kinfolk, our European kinfolk. Um, and, and to be honest, Asian kinfolk, Middle East kinfolk, and further. Uh, and so each of these kinfolk have to recognize that and, and recognize that even in our kumbaya in this in the in the peace work that we do, um, that that might seem like marginal and, and kind of just like um, not the core of what each tradition is. It provides tremendous benefits of peace, reconciliation, understanding, and cooperation with other communities outside of each one's own fold. Uh, and we've been doing it legit for a long time, <laughs> years and decades, even generations before us. So we're, we're part of a legacy. Um, hallelujah, Baruch Hashem, Alhamdulillah, Jai Om, Shishit. Hado. So anyways... Uh, now, I was talking about relationship, marriage, um, corruption, finding a solution. Um, so, 
Now, when it comes to the um, the experience of the Republic, um, the Republic is, is based upon the experience of the individual. It intrinsically undermines the traditional family, regardless of what the, what the ethnicity or race or religion is. The Republic um, just emphasizes the individual, and because of that, uh, it erodes the fabric of relationship with others in the family. Marriage itself, uh, marriage becomes just a like a, a, a pretense, effectively, and, and sex is, is conducted um, to different degrees of faithfulness. Um, but it, it's, it becomes increasingly rife with corruption because it's less founded within precepts of um, uh, altruism. So, recognizing that, as I progress in my spiritual path, uh, I mentioned before that I have 11 wives in this life. Nine wives I have before I graduate from law school over 20 years ago without knowing properly what marriage is. And additionally, two wives I marry within recent years along knowing, learning, and, 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 and uh, practicing in an increasingly righteous and healthy way. That being said, still significant challenges um, because there's much to reconcile. And so my wives have yet to live with me. Uh, my, my, the marriages with my wives have yet to be sanctioned by a community uh, that, that formally officially recognizes that. And in the meanwhile, um, there is the experience of persecution. Um, where I am sitting at this very moment is uh, claimed by the world system that's getting into ghost story mode uh, it's claimed by the world system specifically the the uh, subsidiary of the United States and be, um, amidst that um, there is a prohibition of co uh, cohabitation within these premises, meaning that um, the rules that are communicated uh, from the world system, and specifically the United States, is such that um, that threatens uh, violent action, um, eviction, um, and that might sound benign, but what eviction essentially equates to is guys with guns coming to the door and, and, and uh, threatening expulsion, abduction, and ind indefinite incarceration uh, accordingly. So uh, that's the threat amidst even just having somebody else besides myself living here for a period longer than a few days. Um, it's, in, it's an illegal rule. It's against, against the United Nations uh, Charter. It's against the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's against the U.S. Constitution and additionally, but uh, since when does that matter? Um, U.S. law matters? No. we got to think of something like that. But um, anyways, there's something there. Um, and I don't mean to sound snarky. Uh, should, uh, we're getting into the dark energy at this moment. Uh, and again, dark energy is not evil energy. It's just a different, it's a different nature. So... Um, Um, I'm doing this like I did. All right, here we go. <laughs> there we go. Shine the lights in my eye again. Well, speaking about, anyways. All right. Um, so that's the standing threat, and that that's communicated even before I before I uh, locate here uh, a number of years ago, twelve years ago, something like that. Um, 
And on previous occasions, when I do help kinfolk out from the streets, and additionally need a place to stay for, for a brief period of time, um, there are threats directly made again. Uh, that um, if if that if that's the case, then eviction da 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 da. And eventually, I was in, in, uh, locked up for a period of time because I was I was helping kinfolk out. Um, so that those are the conditions. So when it comes to having a wife here, um, it's one thing to help kinfolk out on the street and just let kinfolk know look, this the situation here. It can get hectic if y'all trying to stay here. I'm just letting you know what the circumstances are, kinfolk particularly men it was men uh so let them know and and um that was that but that's one thing when 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 uh, availing other brethren to that type of um hostility and violence less less um that that prospect is less uh a go when it comes to women we have to be much further secure um uh, and 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 uh assured uh when it comes to um uh, protecting the women within our community um so because of that it's it's a matter of like securing agreements beforehand but like yo you're you're not going to come here through here right here if i have my wife here yeah and so what we receive is uh verbal innu uh indirect assurances of like we're, okay we're we're straight now or we'll we'll talk about it when happen but no no for me to be here i there were the things that need to be signed in paper and this that, and the other and so that's when things that's when that that's when the system is serious about something when when it's when it's reduced to to a contract uh, so we have yet to have that that written uh, a formal assurance of acceptability acceptance of of my wife's living here with me um and so because of that um it it, it has yet to happen uh that's one of the reasons uh, a significant reason for that um And thus, amidst those conditions, I leave here. I go to another country, uh, soliciting political asylum, and it is re illegally denied, and I am forcefully brought back here. Um, and thus, uh, the question emerges of how is an individual, a man, in such circumstances, um, How does a man establish a house and um, wherein to cohabit with his wife uh, and to raise a family, uh, particularly as stipulated within the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, within the Declaration of Independence, um, presumably in some way remotely within the U.S. Constitution and further. Um, if it's illegal for somebody to, if it's illegal for a wife to cohabit with a man in his own dom domicile, um, and in that circumstance he leaves the nation to reside in another nation where he can cohabit with his wife, uh, but in, when he moves to the other nation, he's forcibly brought back to the same nation where it is um where it is illegal for him to cohabit with his wife um i've left i've i, I lived on the street i went to the street and, and i got picked up on the street and locked up for being on the street um and then brought back here again so it's there's uh there's there seems to be well there's a lot of outs but uh in terms of a, a proper peaceful um and sustainable out that's that's to the optimal well-being of all kinfolk um there there seems to be ridiculously um uh little solution uh concerning that like i said i've lived here and it's been illegal i've left here and been brought dra dra back I've, I've gone to the streets and, and been drawn and, and been uh, dragged back here as well um so Meanwhile, life continues. Gray hairs grow, and additionally, so, and, and the thing about the republic is, it's not one person versus another person. There's not one person in charge. It's revolving uh, positions of authority. So it's a system, uh, and the system can uh, just people punch a clock and and, and continue the the illegal uh, actions, and then um, then punch out, and then somebody else comes in. So the names change, um, and people forget. People don't remember what happened before. They, they don't, I don't remember anything that happened about that. I wasn't here. That wasn't me. 
So there's there's lack of responsibility, there's a lack of accountability, there's lack lack of recollection, there's lack of loyalty, there's lack of interest, there's lack of commitment, there's lack of ethics and, and integrity. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of just being part of a, a cog and getting compensation for that and, and basically just doing best to do nothing uh, and just keep things status quo. But anyways, amidst that, um, nature and needs and... Um, a man has needs and a man a woman has needs and when a man is commanded to be married to have children um, there is even to be on the needs there is a, a, a divine um, uh, ordinance a divine commandment uh, to do that so all that being said um, that's where the that's where things are at this moment and an interesting uh, um, observation or consideration that is shared with me recently even just today is that um, my sexuality is beyond my control. The sexuality of every individual is beyond each individual's control. And the logic of that is this. Um, when we talk about sexuality, we're talking about sexual behavior. And when we're talking about sexual behavior, we're talking about sexual intercourse. And sexual intercourse involves mutual consensual uh, interaction between two people. That means that it's beyond just one individual. That means the individual relies upon somebody else to fulfill, to manifest, to consummate that endeavor, that yearning, that guidance, that mitzvah, or however we want to do it. So the sexuality that encompasses that, that, that kind of aggregate of experience is beyond one's own control because a person doesn't control what somebody else does. Basically, effectively, people can be very manipulative and everything else like that, but essentially... A person does not control what somebody else does, absolutely. So the sexuality of an individual in, have, in interacting with a person, regardless of what the nature of that sex, sexual exchange is, sexual interaction is, whether it's through marriage, whether it's through adultery, promiscuity, rape, or whatever else, the person is still relying upon somebody else. Um, so it's something interesting for consideration because that's the intrinsically like the, the intrinsic um, humility that is involved in that endeavor of consummation, of relationship even, in, in a primordial and existential sense. Um, and so it's, it's, it's not a matter about being uh, homosexual or heterosexual or anything else like that. It's just a matter of recognizing, because even whether one is heterosexual or homosexual or whatever, it still relies upon the, the will and the existence of somebody else. If it's bestiality, same thing. Even if it's just asexuality, that's still relying upon something else. Because even ultimately, even if, if somebody's celibate or if somebody just masturbates to the thought of one's own self and narcissistically, somebody actually eventually at some point has to recognize that that, that, that being comes from somebody else. Uh, and and, and, and when, when in, engaging in that act of procreation, because that's what it is, uh, has to be in some way, some degree of con uh, direct consciousness, be aware of like the, the continuity of like where that where does this come from what's the purpose of that um and recognize that that even in that a, that very absolute isolated asexual experience the person comes from somebody else so other people other persons um and uh there there's the requ requirement of reconciliation with that so uh it's, it's a very challenging thing for people who are conditioned to be um uh, not just stubborn, not just uh, like, um, um, I don't say hard-headed, but um, very uh, fiercely individualistic uh, and just concentrating on one's own kind of thing, even in kind of like a sheet mode of just like uh, fulfilling one's tasks for one's job and just doing that and, and tending to oneself and, and staying out of the trouble, staying out of, even out of, out of ambitions and all those uh, kind of career track kind of joints or whatever. Um, it's even particularly within those experiences, um, uh, it can, it's very difficult to reconcile um, the, the necessity of uh, the, the actuality of needing somebody else to fulfill one's own experience. So um, those are some thoughts I'm sharing. Now, to be honest, at this point, um, 
where I am um, in, in dealing with what I'm dealing with, I am on the brink of, um, f so first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm committed to, I'm commanded to be married, to have children. So the, the, the tract of celibacy is, is other than an option. Um, and so it's a matter of dedicating and concentrating myself to my relationship with my wives in marriage. Um, and amidst the challenges uh, and everything else, um, continually um, navigating and negotiating the prospect of marrying another woman in, in the immediate sense at this moment, um, who is increasingly proximate with the discipline and the um, conscientiousness and, and, and devotion to the same cause that I am devoted within. Um, so that's a continual challenge uh, because our behavior, who we, who we, um, who we commit ourselves to, particularly in a, in a, um, in a um, marital and um, conjugal uh, context, uh, speaks so much about who we are, the character of who we are, uh, ultimately, in this earthly walk. Uh, beyond just our nice game or whatever else. I mean, that's that's the crux of it, and it's easy. It's easier said than done because it's beyond our control. Uh, and like I said, it requires. It involves um, shared discipline, and I live a very strict life. It's not fun. Uh, it's boring. It actually. It, it, it's actually. It's not fun. It can seem fun when people look at it in, at certain times, uh, but in those occasions like it's work like it's like like a musician on stage there it could seem like fun but yo that's a lot of work um and it's a lot of responsibility so um anyways uh but it's, it's beautiful and it's, it's joy but it's a whole lot of work it's a whole lot of pain uh it's a whole lot of challenges um and uh it's difficult and and uh it's difficult for me after doing it for serious dedicated for 20 years um it's difficult for a woman uh, who is raised in a different way um who's accustomed to certain comforts uh, and certain ways of, of valuing herself certain um n knowledge about like uh, ways of being within certain elements of society particularly when going through academia and having a certain knowledge temporal knowledge about civilization and additionally there are a lot of uh, social precepts and, and, and etiquette and, and things like that that, that go, go hand in hand with that type of ascension within the academic hierarchy. Uh, and it, it's very difficult to let that go. It's not even just a matter of letting it go, but uh, there's a relation, there are relationships that are attached with those that etiquette in those ways and additionally. And it's, it's, it's challenging and again, family and friends and, and additionally. So uh, even when a woman is very drawn towards and interested and motivated and like, sees the like the the destiny perhaps is one way to describe it it's a little bit um a little bit fantastical but just sees the the beauty the truth um uh within this path it's very difficult to to uh to take steps in that direction uh, and I ain't perfect. Uh, like I'm, I'm not. Uh, anyway, all right. So amidst these conditions, to be honest, I'm at the brink of uh, securing virtual concubines in the in the in the ways permitted, uh, made permissible uh, within the Quran and within Torah. Um, and that it sounds terrible. And additionally, but the thing is, that's like the norm of conventional society at this point and it's not it's uh, I'm not going to go into details of what that actually means or whatever else because it's just it's not favorable um, but uh, it's, it's challenging not to do that because like as I mentioned in the previous joint even just going out the door um, and going to the store getting food and, and, and additionally um, there's just a lot of things that um, make it very difficult for a man to be single uh, and celibate um, within these conditions. And um, particularly when uh, 
when that is um, compounded by uh, prohibitions and threats uh, towards the man for having a wife. And additionally, and so uh, in terms of planning and preparation and the prospects of um, of properly and prosperly um, cohabiting with a wife, um, it 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 the the prospect of the uh, uh, concubines, as, as heinous as that sounds and is, is increasingly the um, probable. Uh, so, I'll, I will say that part of the purpose for me saying that um, amidst every all the cringe I share for the past week particularly, and I've, I've shared these things for years at this point, um, part of the purpose for me sharing that is because uh, I know that the world system is listening to this, and I know that the world system processes this, uh, and I know that the world system responds to this. I see the evidence of that. Uh, it, it becomes increasingly evident, and it's not a matter of being like superior, inferior, or this and the other, but this is the methodology of negotiation. Um, and it is recognized, again, the, 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 the practice of having concubines and additionally is, it's not even just not favorable, it's harmful uh, for all people, for all, all people involved. Um, it is, it may be considered, it actually is, particularly in, in the methodology that, I, that I'm, that I'm, um, that I'm referencing, that I didn't describe, but that I'm referencing, it's increasingly favorable to the, to the, uh, to the, to the uh, mainstream practices of dating um, and playing the field and all the games that cats run on each other. I'm not lying. I'm doing it in, in, in the optimally righteous way that I, that, that is almost imaginable. Um, but at the same time, uh, there's an absence of full commitment necessarily to, to, the, to the women involved. And that's harmful. It's harmful for myself, wasting in, in, in spending seed, my life energy, uh, undermining the credibility of, of my, the, the things that I share, the teach, practice, and additionally, um, uh, un, not optimally caring for, intending for it to, and providing, supporting the interests of the women in terms of having husband and settling down and being supported, continuing life. I share everything I can. I, and am I able to so that continues um, but but a woman need requires like not like a woman requires um, life devotion um, and, and and commitment uh, dutifully it's not just a matter of nice intentions it's it's actuality and that's part of what dowry is and additionally so the things I share is a know-how and that's actually extremely valuable for women today because women in conventional society, in, in, the, in the secular methodology, the republic, the science, and additionally, are increasingly um, uh, situated to utilize knowledge um, in a way that is uh, self-sustaining, even as a single woman in, in, this, in this society, in, in the postmodern and continuing society. So the knowledge that I share is actually very valuable and, 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 and does um, support or does... Uh, strengthen and increase a woman's ability to be self-sufficient in such a system. Um, so it's that's actual, but at the same time, it's not far preferable because a woman needs further than just like materiality and, and status and, and, and security. She needs the, uh, a, a man's uh, attention and, and 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 affection, touch, um, proximity, and, and and further. So um, and and a man who who. Uh, invest his attention and energies along a number of relationships with women is is um, being derelict in in his in each relationship that he has with women a woman accordingly in that in that context so again it's not favorable it's harmful um, but again given what the circumstances are at this moment um, and the hostilities and and restrictions and additionally that are being uh, manifested and threatened by the system. Uh, it's difficult to to um, to imagine or to 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 um, plan, prepare a, a an alternative um, 
um, methodology because as it is the system is has a history and in, 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 in a tendency of just um, in, imposing sterility on people directly and indirectly um, we can look at the, the the things that are done to native women through the generations of forcefully sterilizing women similarly within kinfolk of Africa uh, and additionally so um, that's that's like explicitly direct sterilization. But then there's there's political impotence, there's economic impotence, there's and strangleholds of just like slowly killing off an individual and slowly killing off a people, um, and and uh, providing rewards for um, uh, non procreating and additionally abortion and and further. So th this is this is just the methodology of the system, uh, and meanwhile, also promoting not just not just sanctioning and, and long, but promoting uh, promiscuity and hypersexuality, and additionally, so it's, it's just it's, uh, it's extremely unhealthy circumstances in society in general. So when I when I talk about what I'm mentioning in terms of uh, the virtual uh, concubines, and additionally. It's actually favorable to what the current conditions are, and not just what the conditions are, but what the conditions that are being imposed upon are for years and years and years. But that's not an excuse, um, and uh, it's it's not a, it's not a, it's not acceptable. Well, I, I, I have to I have to watch that because, in by by different standards, it's not acceptable, particularly by those standards that that expect people to be s s completely uh, celibate. Um, but for those who have the the direction and the guidance and the inclination of procreation um this is this is um this is what it is so that being said i've been at this for almost an hour at this point um and uh it's gonna wrap it up with this and uh ah hmm well I, what i'll say as i as i wrap this up is that um, we're hitting the road, as I mentioned before, the Sukkah Hope Road Trip. Uh, is the working title of what we're working with, sharing world liberty and roots. <laughs> For those who, are, who still have the, uh, the receptivity to such a message after what I just communicate. Um, we actually are, are receiving some responses and some support uh, along these lines. I, mean, I shared the, the, su the, the, the shrach that we re receive that we we secure recently I don't know how visible that is I don't have uh, it's a little bit there it is um, and then also uh, we're working on getting the the framework of the sukkah uh, and utilizing that sukkah as the 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 the, the epicenter of our of our um, of our road trip joint um, and making appropriate adjustments um, that are halakhic um, accordingly um, so we we actually we we received some initial uh, uh, welcomes from from host kinfolk, um, and so now we're working on logistics about um, about schedule and and and, and uh, material material supplies, um, transportation, and uh, and programming um, and, and connecting in, in in the sequence of the tour at this point. So. Uh, it's 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 coming together. Um, Alhamdulillah, Baruch Hashem, Hallelujah, Jai Om, Shishir Mado, and uh, so that's where things are with that. Um, and that's gonna be a wrap for today, for the moment. Respect and honor to His Majesty Hel Selassie. I respect and mad respect and honor to Her Majesty Wazara Manan. All thanks and praise to the Most High Elohim, Jah Rastafari. Blessed love and peace.